this is Thomas over at Tom's Garage. Today I'm going to be reviewing five different powered subwoofers, and these are all going into a 2014 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. So I recently upgraded the sound system within my Jeep Wrangler. Um, I have a Pioneer AVX um, 4100 unit. I upgraded the speakers to the 77 Kicker 10s, and then I had the Infinity Bass Link. Um, I had this small powered subwoofer in the back of my Jeep for, for about a year. Uh, picked it up on Craigslist for a good deal. Unfortunately, it died on me, so that caused me to go on the hunt for a replacement subwoofer. And that's what I've got here. We've got the small but mighty JBL Bass Pro SL. Um, I've got the replacement for the Infinity Bass Link, the Infinity Bass Link DC. Um, I'm excited to hear this guy because I haven't actually been able to find too many reviews for the subwoofer. I've got a larger Rocker Fosgate. Um, so this is actually the uh, 300 watt 12 inch uh, powered subwoofer. Uh, this is the only 12 inch subwoofer within the setup here. And then I have the most powerful uh, subwoofer among all of them. Uh, it's the now discontinued um, Kicker uh, substation. The 77 uh, PEC 10, I believe. Um, so, yeah, the PES 10C. And this guy was actually picked up um, as a refurbished model on Crutchfield, but I've heard, heard good things about it, so I'm excited to hear how this one compares to all the other subwoofers. And again, all of these are going into, I'll be testing them in my uh, 2014. Uh, Jeep Wrangler Unlimited that I've got behind me. Over here we've got the JBL Base Pro SL. As you can see, it's a very small subwoofer, uh, not very thick. Uh, I just had it mounted in the in the back of the Jeep. Um, but normally, you would mount this, you know, under the under the rear seat or under the front seats of the Jeep. You're very good if you really don't want to take up any cargo space. Uh, it's a good option. Next one we'll be looking at is the Infinity Baselink DC. So this is the successor to the Infinity Baselink. So I've got my, my old Baselink there. Uh, here's the new one. Uh, some of the key standouts on this one compared to the old one. You know, it is like a silver finish instead of the black. Um, kind of prefer the black since it fit better with the, with the interior of my car, but overall it looks nice. Um, it has a new style quick detach for moving the subwoofer so um, there's this little latch right there and then you can actually just um, lift the subwoofer up and uh, up and out so this entire bottom piece uh, separates from the rest of the subwoofer as so we can see here uh, it separates and then it uh, lifts out of the base so uh, neat mounting system so you can actually just screw that that bottom piece um, into your vehicle or wherever you're going to mount it. Um, the base link, the old one, did not come with something like that. Um, instead it had some brackets. Instead they weren't as easy to quick detach. Um, I ended up just having this in the back of my Jeep and I'll show you how we'll have it. Then I had it strapped down. Um, it did okay. Some other differences. This one is not listed as marine rated um, on the specs, but I did see on the press releases, they did state that it was um, marine rated. It actually has a cover that says, you know, no no direct spray. Um, so it seems like, you know, this one would be pretty weather resistant. So if you ever get caught with the top off on your Jeep, um, you should be okay if this gets wet. Um, we've got our inputs here. One thing that's different is it has a different style connector um, to the Jeep or for your uh, for your hookups so instead of having you know kind of one of these you know traditional connectors the quick detach where you have the 
uh, positive, negative in the ground, and then you can you hook up the connector there, or you hook up the wiring that way. And it does it has its own harness that you have to like splice. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, it's not not universal. All the other subwoofers um, I've seen either they either have the quick detach or they just have the, the three different connections. But the advantage with this one, I guess, is if you don't have um, an aftermarket head unit in your Jeep or your vehicle, um, it allows you to more, you know, more easily connect it just to the stock system. So let's put that back here. Yep. And then no other controls. The only controls that we have are going to be um, so on the inside, on the outside, you have your gain, bass boost, and uh, crossover settings. So that's in addition to the other switches that we have. So let's take a look at how this looks like in the Jeep. All right, so now we've got the base link DC in the back of the Jeep. So definitely one of the smaller subwoofers. Um, so even though one thing that is, uh, you know, even though it's smaller in size overall, because of kind of the, the mounting bracket, um, I don't have it hard mounted to the Jeep, um, but it actually doesn't take up that much more or that much less space than the other subwoofers. That's one thing I don't like. Um, the gray color, not the biggest fan of. It, it stands out a lot, but um, but it's not too bad. It's, it looks like a durable finish. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it does appear to have some weatherproofing to it, so it'd be a good one if you drive around topless a lot. Um, in terms of the sound, um, it's only rated at 200 watts. So definitely not as strong as the Fosgate or the substation, but it will definitely it won't overpower your um, your the rest of your speakers. One thing I found with like the the substation and the uh, the Fosgate is um, if you don't have an external amplifier for your speakers, like for me, I have a Pioneer um, NEX forty one hundred, and I have that powering some of the uh, seventy seven Kicker ten upgraded. Uh, speakers, but the the factory or the the head unit is only rated about you know 13 watts RMS per speaker, whereas you know this is 200. The other one, the Rocker Fosca is 300. Substations 400 or 450. Um, so this one definitely does a better job of blending in, in in terms of volume. The other ones I found out have to turn it down, otherwise the bass would just be too uh, too overpowering almost. Uh, but definitely a good choice. I didn't see too many reviews on this. Overall, I'm impressed. You know, it's uh, it's not boomy. It's, it's it has a very nice bass note to it. Um, really impressed with the sound. I really like the the old bass link that I had, and this one does a good job of of carrying the name forward. Here's the Rocker Fosgate, 12 inch, enclosed subwoofer in the back of the Jeep Wrangler. The back of the subwoofer is angled, so it fits nicely against the back of the Jeep. However, because of that shape, um, you can't really fit it on the side of the Jeep, but overall not too bad. Doesn't take up too much space, has a good amount of kick, and it has a quick, um, quick detach connector. Uh, so that way if you need the extra space, you can very easily remove it. Alright, so let's take a closer look at the kicker substation. This is the PS10. C, so the PS10C model, um, it's rated at 450 watts RMS, it has a 10 inch subwoofer, and taking a look at the connections and the hardware, um, so we've got some, uh, we have a quick detach connector, um, so that way you can quickly take this out of the Jeep if you need extra room. Um, we have uh, a bass boost dial, crossover frequency gain, uh, this is the uh, input right there. It has actually a quick detach connector so that way you can take the uh, RCA cables going to your head unit. You can attach them to the quick detach input so that way you can quickly remove this as well. Uh, and we have a remote base uh, input. It actually comes with a little controller right there. So with that controller you can very quickly adjust the base you know, depending on the song that's playing or you know just your mood at the time. Pretty compact. Um, compared to, you know, the, the base links, um, it's actually a little bit thinner from the side. You can see, so it's really not too, not too big at the bottom, tapers down, um, a good amount at the top. Um, if we compare that to 
you know, let's say like the base link, um, either the, the original base link or the new base link DC, I would say it is, you know, just about the same thickness at the bottom, less at the top. And then of course, compared to the kicker, this is a good bit smaller. So let's go ahead and hook this up and see how this one sounds. So I haven't put this in yet, but I will say that it is very difficult to remove the quick detach on the subwoofer. I had to use a screwdriver to pry it off. So it seems like, you know, if um, portability is a main concern, being able to move the subwoofer out of the way, I would say this is probably going to be one of the pain Got points. Got the kicker substation in the back of the Jeep. So compared to the Rocker Fosgate, um, it is a little bit smaller. Um, it's not as deep. Uh, a big difference is the, the front of the, of the subwoofer is angled instead of the back. So if you put it up against the back of the seat like I do, um, it doesn't, you know, tuck up, you know, as nicely, but, you know, it doesn't take up too much space. And I've also seen people, you know, mount it uh, since the back is flat. You know, you can like put it up against like this wall, for example. Uh, I didn't try that mainly because my cables, uh, I had them all routed over on the driver's side. Uh, I didn't feel like moving them just for the testing purposes. Um, so some of my initial thoughts after listening to this for a while, um, it has a, definitely a good amount of bass. I mean, it's rated at 450 watts, so the most powerful out of all the subwoofers. Um, the bass isn't as deep as the Fosgate because it's a, we've got a 10-inch subwoofer instead of the 12. Other than that, you know, it does sound very good, very punchy. Um, my main complaints are the quality, um, you know, the build of the subwoofer. So it was one of the more expensive ones. And as you can see, it doesn't really hold up well. Instead of being like a hard plastic, it almost feels like kind of like a, like a fake leather covered, like kind of like plywood. So it's, you know, it's getting some like nicks in there uh, pretty easily. There's no grill guard, but I did get the, um, the optional one. It doesn't come with it. So it's a hard toss up. It's about, you know, twice as much as the Rocker Fosgate. So I'm still gonna have to do some digging, but overall, you know, pretty compact subwoofer, good fit for the Jeep Wrangler. All right, so I've moved the, um, the kicker substation to the side of the Jeep so you can see kind of what that looks like. Um, I have seen people, they have, um, they install one of these racks that kind of goes over the wheel well, and then they would attach this to the back. Um, not too bad, it's pretty out of the way. Um, similar takes up you know not that much more space than you know the, the factory subwoofer that would that would come over over here depending on your model year lastly I've got the old infinity base link um, so I had it mounted in the back of the Jeep just like this I thought it fit very well with the overall design of the Jeep you know it, it felt very rugged I always threw a whole bunch of things in the back of the Jeep never had to worry about uh, the subwoofer getting damaged um, and as I mentioned all I did was I had a, a strap that, that went from here to the other hook on the other side. Always stayed in place. Um, the volume matched very well with the um, with the aftermarket head unit that I had, even with without having a powered um, you know amplifier. So this one you know did very well. It won't you know shake your windows like crazy, but you'll definitely feel the bass way more than the the, the factory subwoofers. And again, the only reason why I ended up looking for a replacement for this one was because that it did die all of a sudden. Um, I had it for about, you know, a year and a half. Uh, I got it on Craigslist for, for maybe a hundred bucks. Um, and unfortunately it died just after the warranty period ended. Um, so infinity would not warranty it. Yep. But I mean, other than that, you know, I, I have read that the uh, this was a you know pretty common problem. It would appear to be on the power light it was on, and it just would stop producing uh, bass. So I'm hoping that this problem won't carry over to the uh, to the new Baselink DC.